Okay, hi, what's up? My name is Jide J. Blaze Oyegbile, and I'm an actor that's based in Lagos, Nigeria. It's not like I forgot. <laughs> it's just weird and um, that I'm actually doing this because for a long time, I've always said I was going to do like um, a YouTube thing where I get to tell you one or two things about the film industry from different perspectives. Um, I mean, the fact that I'm an actor, I am a director, I'm a writer, I'm a producer. Um, sometimes I could be a director of photography. Um, I've learned to light a couple of things. But I'm going to break it down and start segment by segment. And I'm going to do a first chapter on acting. So this is not supposed to be like some formal, formal thing. Um, so it can be as informal as possible. I'm going to speak in pigeon, permit me sometimes. Hopefully by the vex. I'm not angry right now, but I just said it like that, you understand. Um, most importantly, especially if this is supposed to make sense, because there's always something to gain. Everybody's trying to gain something in this industry. That's one thing you need to learn, is you need to subscribe to this page now. Like, just click subscribe. It's a weird phenomenon that in Nigeria, a lot of people, when they see subscribe, automatically what comes to their head is they have to pay some form of money and that's not what this is this is youtube is free apart from your data but you get to watch this and you get to learn one or two things on that strategy with youtube is how we genuinely sort of waste your time because you're trying to gain some some minutes some seconds which eventually results to money with youtube i've not started making money from youtube do not even think about that but i know that that's part of their thing so, like I said, I'm not going to name this shit acting 101. Um, a couple of times, I probably would dab my face because where I'm filming is quite art, which is part of the things we experience in Nollywood. And we constantly cut to dab. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, I'm not going to name this acting 101, like I said earlier on. Um, I mean, it's just acting. And probably take it as um, acting for beginners so this so fucking shit I just said that word again I'm sorry so this is probably gonna be important for people that feel like they want to come into Nollywood and they probably have no experience yet I mean if you have a couple of experiences somehow this might help you but mostly for people that have no experience at all it's supposed to just be a form of guide. I keep getting too many questions, too many questions in my DM. And I said, you know what? I can't reply one person, two, three, four. I probably just put everything in a video or in a series of video, put it on YouTube, which will become a reference that I can send to you. You ask me this question, I'm already just sending you the link. And it sort of answer your questions. And at the same time, it makes sense for me because that way, being a filmmaker, I'm developing a YouTube page. That's just the honest truth. Last, last, everybody on YouTube, they're looking for a way to also make money from YouTube somehow. Uh, apart from the fact that they're trying to impact knowledge into you. And that you must be grateful for. So acting 101, or acting for beginners, I would probably start by asking, like, why acting? Why do you think you want to act? Because that's where a lot of people get it wrong. Because they ask you, what does it mean to be an actor? And several times, I put it to you that the reason why a lot of people want to act, about 70-80% of the time, is because there's this popular actor they've seen on screen that makes sense. There's this fine boy on screen, and they think that this fine boy is getting all the girls, so once I start acting, I'm going to start getting all the girls. Uh, you feel like, oh, when I'm on screen, I look cool to the public, and you're doing it for fame. There are very few people that genuinely will do their research and realize that being an actor in Hollywood, money, no day. There is no money. That's what it simply means. There is no money being an actor, solely an actor in Hollywood. Like, don't get it wrong. And, um, of course, of course, it doesn't mean that a certain number of people would not make money. Like, every other profession that you get involved in or you know about, they are always the top people in that profession and those people are probably making a shitload of money and that's what could happen as an actor but majority of the time the people that are in the average um, number 
this is a problem when you're trying to speak English, you'll be just get confused. But what I'm trying to say is there's a certain number of people that are in the average that you would most likely know. They're not making the kind of money that you think that they are making. Why? Why acting? Don't don't make a mistake and jump into acting because you just want to be popular. Don't think that it's going to give you money. Because once your motivations are like that, you're probably going to get it wrong. Absolutely wrong. When I started acting, surprisingly, I started acting at the age of... I'm not going to say the age, but I started acting some, some 23 years ago. 23, 23, 24 years ago. And why I started acting was... There was this drama group in church and there was this fine girl in the drama group and I'm like, yo, I'm going to get to spend more time with this girl, right? And I joined the drama group and boom. I don't even think the girl said I agreed to date. I was a young chap. I don't even know what was wrong with my head. But I then developed an interest in acting. The fact that this is make-believe and it was in the church. It's mainly in the church, right? You come... You, there's a message, gospel, don't get that wrong, right? You do this thing on stage and everybody's clapping and then they believe you and they believe the story you're telling, trying to tell. I mean, I'm sure that if I check most of the things that we were doing there, we were probably doing rubbish. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, compared to what I know now and what a lot of people know now. I have a lot of friends then, people like Tundi Akena, Job about Tundi Andrew Likes, and we try to make stuff then and that's it. But that's how I stumbled into acting. What is your story? How did you stumble into acting? How did you somehow find yourself in acting? Now, I did all of those ones, but then I went to school and studied medicine and surgery. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with acting. But I know that I love my medicine and I wanted to become a doctor. I ended up having a degree in anatomy and MBBS medicine in so medicine and surgery. Um, but then I went back to film. Because I know that I would always be a filmmaker. I know I'm always going to be an actor. Do you understand? It is possible to be a medical doctor or a lawyer and still be an actor in Nollywood. Remember, I keep talking about Nollywood. So it's not just about Hollywood. In Nollywood, you can become any other thing and stumble into acting. Sadly. Or greatly, I guess. So basically, what I'm saying is you can, whatever profession you have studied, you can still become a Nollywood actor, no matter what it is. Even if you don't have some form of training in the university, you can still become an actor if, you, if your English is good and you don't have to speak English. There are other films that are not even English, you know, and the rest. You can do Yoruba, you can do Igbo, you can do Awusha, and even develop those places to be way better than what we have presently. Why you discover why acting? Because as an actor, a lot of people think you're just going to go on stage or in front of the camera and you act like this person that they're giving to you and boom, you're a fantastic actor. But I'm going to tell you that that's not what acting is. And of course, I may be wrong. <laughs> of course, I may be wrong and I'm not... I'm just saying from my own point of view, my perspective, whatever it is that has made me become what I am today. Because acting basically is make-believe. I am not going to give you... So what I'm going to try and do is not to give you high falutin terminologies, right? I'm trying to break it down as simple as possible so that you get a win of what I'm trying to say. So make-believe. Make-believe is... My name is Jay Blaze. But I want to play this character called Konle. I am not supposed to go and act like I am Konle. I am becoming Kunle. I am inviting Kunle to inhabit this person, this body of art, and express what Kunle will be. That's basically what acting is. And by the time you realize that you're becoming somebody else, then you're going to see that it's not an easy ball game. It's not, it's not just something that you, you just wake up one morning and you boom, oh yeah, now I'm acting, give me the lines. It's not about just the cramming and pouring, literally. There's so much more. The question is, so who is Kunle? So before you pick up a script, or when you pick up a script, you, I mean, you can read the story, have an idea if you want to be a part of the production, I need to see. But when you pick up a script, you need to ask yourself, who is Kunle? 
who is this character that I want to become? You don't just jump down, pfft, you're not the character. No, who is this character? And that's where the character Bible comes into play. There's something called a character Bible. Now, for every character that you play, there has to be a character Bible. I know that because of, like in Nollywood, like I keep saying, and there are different skills in Nollywood, but I'm talking about the majority of the films that you probably would stumble upon as an upcomer, someone that's just starting. Most script writers do not write a character Bible for you, sadly. There are very few projects, I've seen actors, like they are big actors today, that don't know what a character Bible is. No, no debate about it. There are big actors that have absolutely no idea what a character Bible is. And it doesn't mean that it didn't work for them, because most of the time they are extremely talented. They are so talented that they get to be in films even if they do not know their, if they don't have that background knowledge or they don't know their, they don't do their own work, they will get to be in films. Um, I, I know somebody has told me before that one of the easiest ways to become an actor in Hollywood is just join Big Brother. Yo, you're coming out of Big Brother, you're probably having like 20 films that they want you to already be in. You don't even know what the character Bible is. I mean, no offense, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but I'm trying to explain to you why <laughs> you're going to get a couple of people like that that will be a, in films and they don't know these stuffs. But if you want to be well-grounded, there's no, it's not, it's not something bad for you to actually have that knowledge to yourself. Know what a character Bible is. What's this character Bible? In a layman term, right, I'll try to explain it so that everybody can understand. With character Bibles, who is this person? Oh, his name is Kunle, is, I mean, the person your complexion is fair, is dark. It was born when? Where was he born? How many siblings does he have? Are his, um, his parents, are they alive or dead? If they are dead, when did they die? What work does Kunle's dad do? What work does his mom do? Do you understand? The siblings that he has, is it the first or second or third born? Now, because all of this will determine how this person would respond in certain scenarios. So, for example, if he's the first born, there's a sense of taking care of the younger ones. So, when he finds himself in a situation, spontaneously, he wants to take care of people around him. That's because that's his upbringing. But if he's the last born in his family, subconsciously, he expects to be taken care of. And that's why in relationships, for example, in the film, any film, the firstborn, you probably see him taking care of the babe more. And then you now see the lastborn sucking up to everything. In court, might be dirty, might be stubborn, might be a nuisance. And I'm not saying that all lastborns are nuisance, but I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Um, position in the family, what, what's this person? This person go to school? Primary, secondary, tertiary. Oh, that means it's Leonard. Is there postgraduate? Oh, that gives us more idea. What did this person study? In all of these schools, were they private or public schools? Because now, when you know all of this, if, for example, his name is um, Smith, his dad is uh, works in internal, or what can we use now? Works at um, his dad is a lawyer that works for the governor. His dad at least stays in Nigeria. His mom, same thing. But eventually, somehow, this guy stays with his grandpa that decides to put him in a public school where they speak pidgin. Then he has acquired how to speak pidgin. Meaning that in his, in his scene, this guy probably has been speaking English all through and something just goes off and the guy just changes it. So, yeah, really? You did Chris? I'm like, okay, where's that coming from? But that's because this person understands his character Bible. Now, if you give me a character that has never, never gone to a public school, has no reason to understand Pigeon, and then as a writer, you're just flexing, you feel like, if I write, I'm all, wait till they walk your head. Simply means what's wrong with your head, right? I need to ask the writer, why is this guy saying this? Because there's nowhere in his history, or his character Bible that says that this person must have learned how to speak this way. So that way, you're going to be reading the script and you yourself will be able to tell the director, like, ah, director, sir, I honestly do not think that this character will sound this way. But that's because you know your character Bible. 
Do you understand? Now, is a person an athlete? Does this person play football? Um, soccer? What, what does this person do? Now, what's this person's relationship with older people or younger people? How does he vibe with these people? Um, in the film itself, which sometimes is a character bible, like I was in Riona and there was a character bible. In Riona's character bible, for example, they're going to talk about your relationship with... Riona is an African magic um, telenovela and it was, um, I mean, EP'd by James Omokwe, right? Where I played the chief alongside one of my other guys, Jimmy Van Woo. But right, in Riona, for example, we had our character bibles that showed your relationship with um, I mean, the important people that you probably have sins with. So for the king, what's his relationship with his chief? What's his relationship with his first wife? What's his relationship with his second wife? All of these things is going to guide you. And that's in like a 260 episode series. So you need to know that in such a scenario like that, if your character Bible is off, you're probably going to be off for the whole series. You're going to be doing rubbish. There is no arc. You cannot... You're not sticking to your character anymore. You're not becoming. You're just coming and deliver. Oh, I know how to cram the lines. Then let me, let me just dump the lines for you. Do you understand? As beginners, you might stumble into... And I use the word stumble because so many times you probably don't even <laughs> deserve to be in the project. That's the truth. But you might stumble in that project. And these are the... the um, I mean, this is one of the few things you need to do to be able to say, you know what? At least I don't try. Even though I stumble into this shit, I'm going to give it my best. And part of giving it your best is doing your homework. Okay? Um, if you're just starting on another very important thing that you cannot even play with, there are things called acting tools. There's a monologue. There's something called a monologue. Um, there is your headshot. Then there is a showreel. Then there's something called a lookbook. And then there's something called, in court, a, a, a look monologue. I'm going to explain why I'm saying, calling it a look monologue, right? So now, first and foremost, headshots. You must be a bloody joker. You must be a clown. If you think you're going to come into the industry and you do not have a proper professional headshot. A headshot is um it's more like taking a picture but it's like a five by seven sometimes but basically it shows like this it gives the directors and casting directors an idea of what this person looks like at a glance there's some characters that you're going to be entirely off you can't even fit into those characters the moment they just see your picture you don't even have to say a or b or c from looking at the picture they already know for example um you the character is, uh, is supposed to be an albino. You're coming in and you're black as charcoal. Excuse me. Like, did you get burnt or something? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just funny to say, but nah, that's definitely going to happen. And that's part of, I mean, that's part of why your headshot is important. On your CV, on the acting CV, your headshot needs to be there. So you need your headshots. Whatever it is that you want to do, wherever you want to start from, you need to first and foremost get a headshot. And... As much as possible, one thing with the headshot is you have to be as natural as possible. You have to be close to what you look like in real life. So I would always advise for females, no makeup. If you're going to touch anything your face, just slight powder in a way that if they stumble on you somewhere, just waking up, I'm like, oh, okay, I know this person. This is what a person looks like. Because in all honesty, all directors already know I mean, directors that know what they are doing will put you into whatever they want. But they need to see what you look like there. Don't pack too much makeup. And I mean, I've done a casting job before, an audition, where this person is done auditioning. And I'm like, and I keep looking at the headshot. I'm like, I'm, I'm, and genuinely, I won't lie to you. I was surprised. I was confused. I had to ask, sorry, is this you? Because what I'm seeing in front of me is... A dark-skinned person but what is here on the headshot god th this drink is i don't think it's, it's, not, it's not as fair as what i saw in the picture so basically your headshot needs to be as bare as possible real as possible 
um, as much as possible. You do not have to tint your hair, etc. Come as bare as you can be because you're going to write your information by the side. Now you can have series of lookbook, which is what I was talking about, lookbook, where you you dress up as different characters, okay? Where you can tint your hair, you can start to do makeup, you can do anything. You want to be this comic character that wears different shades of lipsticks. You can just do that, put the eyeshadow, and I guess this is called eyeshadow, something there. And all of that. And then you become, you have different lookbooks that you can put on your Instagram. So now as a director, because in Nollywood, which I'll keep saying, so not everybody, not all directors are ready to risk it. And you cannot blame them. I'm going to go into production, directing, and whatever it is later on. But I just want to tell you this first. Not all directors are willing to risk it. For you, you are doing that risk for them by looking like the possible character that they already have in their script. Now, they've always seen this person as this bear character. But all of a sudden, you post a picture and they're like, hmm, I think this person might work for this character. They've not even heard you speak. But because you're an actor first, and as an actor, you're not supposed to be stereotyped. It means that you know your job. It means that you're just going to become do a bit of research and become this new character that they want you to become, right? So, um, you can do different lookbooks, look different in different pictures and post it. That way I have an idea of, okay, I can put this person as a tout. Oh, well, this guy can do jai jai. Sometimes dress well in the... Pff, I'm sorry, but dress well so you can say this person can look wealthy. Do you understand? So many times they don't want to bring you on set and then I'm costuming and say, oh yeah, we got it right. Yo, time is going. Um, so I talk about lookbook. Other things that I'm going to mention is um, I think I want to jump to monologue last. But lookbook, just show real. If you're just starting, you may not have a show real, okay? But what a couple of people do is they do series of monologues and then they piece up, they piece together a reel, something like you can now call a show reel to just show the casting directors that you can do this and that, okay? Now, for monologues, <laughs> so a professional monologue should not have music on their ground. And I've seen a lot of people, you do an accent piece, and when you do the accent piece, boom, music is coming up like, yo, yo, because the music is going to push your monologue. But you know what? I think that this first session is long enough. I'm going to do a second session almost, um, I mean, the next video you'll probably see somewhere up above this is going to be the second session. And on that session, I will be talking strictly about monologues. Still for beginners, this is acting for beginners in Nollywood, Nigeria. So uh, make sure that you subscribe. Subscribe. Please do subscribe because that's very important for me. Um, drop a comment or two because that also lets me know what you want me to talk about next. I probably might have made a mistake and I'm curious. And when I see your comment, I'm going to refer to your comment in probably like a couple of videos afterwards because some of these things we shoot and we send later. And that's on that thing. So many actors that want to be actors. You see, you see a film coming out or you see, are you, or the guy posts something about the film and you think that they're just acting it. They probably have acted that shit like eight, ten months ago and you're just seeing clips. They are not just on set trying to film. So do not have to ask and disturb people that, oh yeah, please can I come on your set? I'm already don't finish the set. So anyways, subscribe, like, comment, and share this video, especially to people that you know want to start acting in Nollywood. Thank you. My name is Jide J. Blaze Oyegile, and you can follow me on Instagram at It's J. Blaze. And...